What's up everyone? I've got a very rare 1972 Alfa Romeo Spider in Ned Zion in a rare color. Uh, we'll pull off this cover in a minute and you'll see this beautiful blue. Uh, apparently it's very hard to find the spider in this color so the owner picked this up a while ago uh, in really rough shape uh, but he's restored it fully and has done quite a bit of restoration to this car. It is in phenomenal shape and we're going to make it look better. Even went as far as to powder coat everything underneath the car as well uh, a true like full restoration there's no rust no damage nothing that doesn't look perfect underneath this vehicle I was pretty impressed this 1972 Alfa Romeo Spider is something special he has an aftermarket exhaust he has suspension from Alfa Holics uh, it's the stock diff um, these are aftermarket wheels also from, I think, Alphaholics exhaust. These are definitely a unique design, and he has taken it and made it look even cleaner. Uh, I thought this uh, air filter box was actually an intake manifold, but it turns out it just houses a like, cylindrical filter. I love these old engines. They really fascinate me with some of the designs they use. I'm going to start out with half an ounce of Fine Lab Pure Rinseless Wash in my bucket. Uh, today I had to clean the bucket out and I have limited water because I was stupid and forgot to pick up more at the store this morning, but also people have been buying out distilled water like crazy, I'm not sure why. Um, so dumping this in with no grit guard and then I'm going to soak my towels in here first so I can make sure they get totally covered. Before I put my grit guard back in, I'm gonna dump this extra pump sprayer full of water uh, in here so we can submerge everything. And bam, just set myself up for a car wash uh, with a gallon and a half of water, basically. Um, so always gotta think quick on your feet. So the car is relatively clean because it pretty much comes out on weekends for cars and coffee, which is where I met this guy. So I'm gonna pre-soak the whole thing because uh, I'm working indoors and I'm at Huntington Beach, so it's pretty cool out today. Uh, so I don't have to worry about this stuff drying up on me. If you're working on something like a 1972 Alfa Romeo Spider and you're doing rinseless, uh, you can soak the soft top if it's dirty. This one's really clean because it's brand new, so I'm going to leave it alone. Uh, but don't be afraid to wash the soft top. We're going to do a quick hand wash here using my fluffy blue towels and then we're going to move on to the next step. Rinseless wash is a great way to save time because uh, you can wash cars more quickly most of the time. This car wash only took about 15 minutes. Dry this off with my nice 1100 GSM drying towel that I have here. Uh, and then I'm gonna blow dry it out and we're gonna go a little bit out of order today and skip to the wheels and tires before we play the car. Rinseless wash doesn't leave a ton of water in all the cracks and crevices like it would uh, pressure washing, but you still want to blow dry everything out, make sure there's no water dripping down uh, so it doesn't get in the way of your correction. And also my biggest pet peeve is uh, water drips uh, from like a cheap car wash. So to make that your pet peeve too.
In the last video with the 1969 Camaro, I wanted to do a little review of the Dura dressing, uh, tire dressing, or tire coating, but uh, I applied it wrong. So we're gonna try this again on this car now that I've watched a few videos on how to install it the right way. Uh, so I've got Shine Supply Solution, which is what I usually use for cleaning tires. I'm gonna do a basic clean with that real quick, and then I'm gonna grab out the uh, tire spray, or tire prep spray that Dura dressing comes with. I'm gonna start cleaning uh, the tires now. So cleaning tires,
is all done, I'm going to just give this a quick clay with my nano sponge uh, clay, since this is a relatively clean car. And so I'm trying to fly side this, I'm going to do all the glass as well, and get it ready for paint correction. We've got a lot of paint correction tips in this video today, so if you're looking to learn some stuff, definitely keep on watching. It's already looking better now that we've uh, hit it with clay and uh, the clay loop. Uh, let's take a look at how swirly this thing is on this repaint. So it looks pretty nasty. So we're going to get rid of probably like 60% of these today, uh, maybe more, and really gloss everything up. Since it was repainted, we are of course going to get right out the alcometer uh, paint depth gauge and then we're going to check this out. And as usual, on a lot of these repaints, the readings are all over the place. Some of it is off the chart, some of it is really low. Uh, paint readings are usually crazy, especially on uh, aftermarket paint. Thankfully, it's a two-stage paint job and not single stage. Mobile guys, this is an eight gallon air compressor from California Quiet. It's super quiet, you won't even know it's there. Uh, I carry this around with me to use uh, my Tornador for cleaning pads and pulling stuff out. So here's the Tornador gun. This is your best friend when cleaning pads. All you gotta do is spray the pad with a little liquid and then start blowing it out. Uh, this pad, believe it or not, was washed in the washer with a uh, one of those microfiber restore products. And look how much dust is still coming out of this. So your washer and those products, they don't do anything. You need to blow pads out if you actually want them to be clean and stop throwing dust out of And this can take a while sometimes. You can be blowing out a pad for like five or six minutes. Uh, but this is the best way to clean pads. Today I decided we're going to do the battle of five compounds. I've got Meguiar's 110, five, Fine Lab F500, or F100, sorry, uh, Proj's uh, Microfiber Leveling DA Polish, uh, TLD Last Cut, and Shine Supply Classic Cut. So I'm going to start out with one drop here of Shine Supply Classic Cut. Since we're just doing these small sections, I want to break it down quickly and see what kind of results we're going to get. Last Cut is a really great compound. Uh, it has long working time and it can cut really well and occasionally it finishes outright on the right pad. So I'm curious how to see, to see how this works on this paint. Fine Lab uh, F100 is a water-based compound. Uh, I find that usually it hazes up really quickly and sticks to the paint. Uh, if you're using a DA, I've heard different stories about using rotary. I'm not really sure what the best is for this compound. I've never had a ton of luck with it. If you remember the video I did with the ProJ uh, compound, it performed incredibly well on that black Tesla that we were doing, so let's check it out on how it does on this car. McGuire's 110 is another uh, water-based compound. Uh, McGuire's products are usually really dusty and I'm not a huge fan. Uh, but they do perform well and the water base does help with uh, coating application and longevity later. Uh, so since it's not all oily and filled with fillers or anything like some of the other ones out there. Alright, 
right, let's see. So Classic Cut did a pretty okay job. There's still some defects left. Hazing is pretty minor. Uh, then we move on to Last Cut. A lot of big deep scratches left too after that one. Not as impressed for this one. F500 uh, left weird haze everywhere as I predicted it would. And the uh, Pro-J compound also left a similar kind of haze. Uh, Meguiar's seems to look pretty good. Sorry, that was a quick flash there. Now I'm going to go over all of these uh, with a HDO uh, orange cutting pad from Lake Country and Shine Supply Classic Polish. Jeremy Stevens at Shine Supply said that this is one of the better pads for breaking down Classic Polish and really getting the most out of it. Uh, black pad doesn't always break it down all the way and that might lead to issues later when you panel prep or put coating over it and uh, it pulls haze and stuff back out. So we'll see how this does uh, for finishing these out. Alright, let's check this out. So. Cleaned up nice, no haze, but still more swirls than I'd like on that classic cut section. Uh, so let's check out the next one here. Last cut, no haze, but deep scratches. Uh, Fine Lab F100, it did clean up the haze, but I see there's still a lot of scratches left. Uh, there's still this weird haze from Pro J, and the uh, 110 section looks pretty perfect. Here's what it was before, just as a reminder. Uh, I'm gonna roll with the 110 this time. I've gotten a few requests uh, to demonstrate polishing smaller areas with big polishers. Uh, I learned uh, using like a six inch polisher how to do all the stuff we normally would pull out a three inch or a two inch or one inch for. Uh, and I'm just old school like that. And I barely touch my small tools. And usually I just end up doing stuff like this. So I'm gonna give some pointers today. So for this section, you can see I'm, because I don't wanna burn that edge there, I'm lifting up the pad a little bit and just using the edge of the pad. So I'm just hitting that little section behind the soft top instead of overlapping onto the other panel. You just wanna go real slow and be gentle and use a slow speed when doing this. So same thing here, this car has uh, these little tiny marker lights. And then also this little section right here in the corner that's difficult to get to along the body line. So I'm going to take the bottom of the pad and I'm going to use that to go around uh, the top. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the side and underneath. This way you're using the that piece of the pad right there. You can still get that nice powerful cut from using a big machine and you will clean up most of this area. You'll see like if you get like right next to it where the pad just clearly can't cut, like where the metal part is, that it's still gonna look a little bit crappy, but it looks a lot better than it did. Uh, and same with right here, I'm just using the very edge of the pad. You wanna use a slow speed so you don't burn the edge, uh, but it is very easy to do this and you can achieve nice results without having to hook up 10 other polishers. Some of you will probably be like, what is this guy doing right now? Uh, because yeah, I'm using a five inch polisher uh, to polish this tiny little edge that most of you would probably be terrified of burning. Uh, but this gets way better results than when I try to pull out the Rube's hybrid uh, or use like a three inch polisher or anything because this machine just cuts so amazing. And you can just use the edge of the pad, slow speed, just gentle, go slow and you should be able to achieve a relatively nice finish or make it look better than it did uh, in a faster time than if you went out, grabbed your hybrid or three inch polisher, found your pad sizes, hooked everything up. Uh, so this is just faster. And then see, I'm using the bottom of the pad to get that underneath that little edge right there. There are so many little tricks you can do with a big polisher to hit all the areas. You just have to be careful so you don't burn paint. And obviously don't do this on a car that has really low paint readings.
One of the most common things I see detailers miss, uh, all you high-end detailers out there and paint correction specialists, I'm calling you out right now, uh, is around the door handles. There's always tons of scratches left around door handles. And it's really easy, again, to do the same kind of thing here. Tilt or angle your polisher and get right next to that door handle as close as you can. Uh, even on cars with regular door handles that you potentially damage, you can still do this easily without whacking the door handle. And you will get better results and it will look much better. If you're working on a car that has silly headlights like this, you are going to need your 3 inch. Unfortunately, a 5 inch won't fit in there uh, very well. But Usually you can't get very good results and body shops don't uh, leave so much sandy marks and hazing and crap behind in these areas I've noticed on these old cars uh, that I just go for gloss enhancement. So I just have a white pad here with some classic polish on it. We're just shiny it up basically. No need to go ham here. And since I have my 3 inch polisher out, I'm just going to go ahead and buzz the chrome real quick uh, with some classic polish as well just to brighten things up. Uh, I don't really delve too much into metal polishing myself. I'm not very well learned in that area. Maybe I'll learn eventually. So usually I just do this um, and yeah, just really gloss or enhance things. Most people don't even notice their chrome is all scratched up. They just see how shiny it is. So we've corrected the whole car, so let's do a uh, quick final polish here. Uh, again, HDO orange cutting pad and classic polish breaks down really nice and gives a really nice finish and gets rid of all the haze. Uh, it's a great combo on many different paint finishes. So for what I was going for, finish-wise, uh, I think this looks really nice. Here's a little before and after. You can see it's a lot hazier on this side than on the other. So now it's time for panel prep. Uh, for those of you who haven't watched me before, my panel prep solution is 30% uh, of a bottle full of al rubbing alcohol, uh, either 90% or 70%, it doesn't really seem to matter uh, in my opinion. I put about half an ounce of Fine Lab Pure Rinseless Wash for a little lubrication and extra cleaning power, and then the rest with distilled water. This will get rid of all the oils and anything left behind from polishes, get rid of, get the surface nice and prepped before you coat it. If you have an attention to detail, door jams is another area that I see people miss. I find compound dust and compound in the cracks and crevices of cars corrected by other people all the time. Uh, people don't care about having 100% swirls removed. They care about the little details, like there not being any crap in their door jams. So I'm just taking my panel prep spray here and wiping the jams down, and then I'll go over these with spray wax later also. This is the first alpha that I've done so far where the trunk actually stays open on its own and doesn't need to be propped up with anything. So uh, I was excited about that. I'm uh, just going through all the edges here also, cleaning everything out. And then uh, struggling to uh, close the trunk. These old cars, you gotta slam them sometimes, but uh, I just ended up asking the owner for help later to close it because it wouldn't stay down. With an engine bay as gorgeous as this one, of course we need to clean up under here. Uh, 
a lot of dust gathers in these areas, especially on cars that have those little vents right in front of the windows. I did tape all those off today, um, but you still wanna make sure that there's no dust under the hood on any of the engine components, just because it gives it a way nicer look. You don't have to pressure wash someone's engine and you know do that, but if you just wipe down all the top surfaces, usually people are pretty happy, especially on these classic cars where the engine just speaks so much about the car. Um, I, as you heard before with that Jaguar, I just love these old engine designs. They really fascinate me. It sucks now when you pop the hood on a new car and there's just a bunch of plastics. You can't see the components, you can't see the design. Uh, if you get under the car, there's usually a shield so you can't even see underneath unless you remove that. So it just kind of took the fun out of popping your hood when you go to a car meet. So our last step here is I'm going to apply Ceramic Pro Sport. I'm doing this a weird way today. Uh, I keep Sport in a different bottle. Usually I uh, would have a wet towel, but since I don't have any waters uh, and you need to use plain water, can't have like soap or anything in it, I am spraying this uh, microfiber applicator with uh, my bottle of, or spray bottle of just plain water uh, and then spraying Sport on there afterwards and um, wiping it off. Normally you would wipe the wet towel on the surface and then wipe it off. So it's basically the same thing just using an applicator instead. It takes a little bit longer, uh, but I had to kind of think on the fly so I could apply this. Uh, Ceramic Pro Sport is a super easy coating to apply. I've seen it last up to a year. Uh, Ceramic Pro says it's a six month coating. This is the best money maker for uh, professional detailers because of the cost per bottle and then what it can be upsold for and how good it is. Uh, so if you uh, are a Ceramic Pro installer, you should be installing this stuff all the time. It should be replace wax for your basic detail, wash clay, and Ceramic Pro Sport. You know, that's a great service to have. $199 to $399 depending on your uh, geographic and size of the vehicle. It is a pure money maker. It looks great after a one step or two step correction if they don't want to go for the big coating package. Um, I love this stuff. It's probably one of my favorite spray coatings out there for uh, entry level. covers off which kept them nice and dust free and clean and we're gonna pull out the Dura dressing which I didn't realize had a little dropper top thing on it so I've just been doing this which gets really messy if you get it on your hands it's really sticky wipe it off it'll probably stay in the floor uh, you don't need a lot it seems a little bit goes a long way and uh, you're just gonna wipe it easy on the tire using the applicator that they provide So you might have noticed it turns a kind of freakish blue color. Don't panic like I did the first time. Uh, it's supposed to do that. Uh, it will flash clear afterwards. So um, just don't wipe it off or you'll end up losing product. It's recommended you put at least two layers on this, which is most likely because most people uh, don't get full coverage on their first swipe, especially people who are new to doing this kind of stuff. Uh, so that second layer is to ensure that you've got full coverage all around. Just let it dry. It takes about 10 or 15 minutes before it flashes to clear, but it looks really nice afterwards. Um, I'm not sure if they sell gallons of this stuff, so I don't know how well it fits into professional use uh, for cost-wise, uh, but for the DIY, it definitely seems like a great tire coating for the market, uh, and I was pretty eager to try it. So far, it, I am pretty impressed with it. I'm going to do a third layer here just to see if it makes a difference. Did you guys know that there is uh, coatings for cloth that can also be put on a cloth soft top? Soft top. 
Uh, I'm using Fine Labs textile cloth coating here today, which I'll link one of the other videos we did uh, on how it works. And I am applying this to the soft top. Uh, my bottle's kind of old and the sprayer's kind of wonky, so I am, again, spraying it onto an applicator and wiping it on. Uh, usually you'd want to work this stuff in with gloves, so wait till it dries a little bit and apply a second layer uh, just to make sure you actually get hydrophobic effect out of it. It's a pretty cheap product available to the consumer and the professional. Very hydrophobic, probably lasts 6 to 12 months on carpet and stuff like that, and will bead water off kind of like Scotch Guard. Doesn't, you know, save you from spills and stuff a hundred percent, but it can definitely aid if you uh, get the water or liquid off there within the first like 30 seconds. Now that we're done, let's pull this uh, 1972 Alpha Romeo Spider outside. Hear the engine purr one more time. Thank you so much for watching. Here's our final result here with uh, Ceramic Pro Sport after a two-step correction with Meguiar's 110 compound uh, and Shine Supply Classic Polish. This thing looks brand new again. Uh, another classic car restored. Looks amazing under the sun. The owner was ecstatic. These tires look pretty fly with the Dura dressing on there. And I have gotten to add another sweet old Alpha to the books here. I am in love with these old Italian cars. I think at some point, I, as I mentioned before, I'm definitely going to buy one uh, so that I can drive the spaghetti and meatballs also. Thank you so much again for watching. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, please hit subscribe, share with your friends, and stay tuned. We post a new classic car video every Monday at 12 p.m. along with other great detailing content.